Welcome back to the next video in the DiGPT series and we're going to be following up from the last video which uh, essentially was using the GPT directly to estimate the calories uh, and to basically just look at what it sees try to estimate it from its knowledge and we want to get an understanding of like how good it is so in this video we're going to try to uh, create some you know graphs to just see like okay how good is this model and um, is this something that we can use uh, and, and so on. So uh, yeah, let's, we're just gonna be creating some plots again, like it's not gonna be anything. Uh, we already have the CSV, right? So basically we have, uh, from the last video, we have the image name, the actual calories, the estimated calories, uh, the calorie difference, and then the LLM output, if we want to analyze you know, exactly what the LLM reason when it saw the uh, the image. So let's just start with some imports. Uh, we're going to use, be using Seaborn and some sklearn metrics for you know R squared. And then um, we'll have a save figure so that we can look at it. And then for we'll, we'll create a function analyze model, which will take in uh, basically a data path of the CSV file and an output uh, directory. And then we'll create the output directory if it doesn't exist. We'll load the, the data frame. Uh, we'll get the predictions, the true values, and the errors. Uh, actually, we already have that, but you know we can do this as well. The percentage errors, um, which is just errors divided by the true values times 100. We'll also get absolute percentage errors. And uh, one thing I wanted to do as well is just like look at some extreme cases. So what if we sort them by, um, we'll sort those in this in this as essentially, and we'll take out you know two of the uh, worst overestimates and underestimates, just two that we can look at to see like okay what's going on here. So we'll print the image um, and we'll print some <clears throat> some information basically about. The predicted calories the error and the llm output and we'll do the same for the worst uh underestimates so basically the same thing here and uh, we'll also do uh, get some metrics so this is what we're gonna um in the graph so basically we'll get the mean errors of all the errors um, and the mean percentage errors uh, the absolute percentage error and uh, if we get the error percentiles as well, we can get an idea of basically how off are the errors um, in, you know, like 25 percentile and 75 percentile and also R squared. So also, again, we can get, you know, the quartile errors. So actually here we're looking at, all right, if we look at uh, specific ranges of calorie estimates, then what is the average error basically? Uh, what's the mean error of that particular range of calories? So we'll see it in the resulting graph, but that's basically all that we're doing here. And then we'll create uh, the visualization. So we'll do, first we'll do a histogram plot just to see like where are the bars of the errors. Uh, and to see basically the distribution. Uh, and then let's create a, a scatter plot, basically looking at, you know, um, what, you know, the actual and the estimated calories. So um, again, here is just for some formatting to say that, you know, the X and the Y axis are in good kind of square and set equal limits. Um, yeah. And then finally, we'll just add all the, um, we'll just add them in the text in the graph. So we'll just print all of these basically. Um, and yeah, that's, so that's all we're doing here. Basically, we're just printing uh, the, the text, no sort of graph for the third subplot. And then we'll save that. So uh let's see here so this should be analyzed model this should be analyzed model all right so basically you know we're calling it with the csv analyze results and if we uh, call this now we'll get a analysis result and we'll get this graph so this is the distribution graph 
And so what we can see is that on average, um, it's going to overestimate by eight calories, which is pretty okay. You know, that's actually, actually very good. If we look at the data set itself, it has, I think, 460 calories mean and about uh, 280 standard deviation. Um, so, you know, 8.6 calories on average is quite, you know, is perfect. I think looking at it though, like there's some quite extreme errors that it's making, right? So it's like minus 300 and 300 uh, calories. Uh, that's a lot if we're looking at an average being 460 calories. That's like, could be the entire meal, you know? And looking at the scatter plot, it's quite high standard deviation. But uh, if you look at the key metrics, uh, you know, R squared 0.61, the mean error is 4.6%. The median error is 1.4%. So what we can say basically is that on average, it's very good uh, and it's doing the right thing. But it's, you know, the middle 50% of predictions fall between minus 20 and 27% of the actual calories. So we have quite high variance of the model. Uh, if you look at the error by range, even though if we're looking at something with a high calorie over, you know, 500 to 1,500, we're still quite good on average. All right, so here's an example of the worst overestimate that it's doing, uh, just to get an idea, right? So first of all, we have varied image resolutions in our data set. This one is actually quite low resolution of uh, 600 by 450 or something, uh, or 640 by 480. So this is quite low resolution compared to, you know, if we had um, higher and so that could be a reason as to why it's performing worse but uh, looking at it here you know it's um, this is quite a difficult one so the, the true calories of this is 350 which I don't know if I would have guessed uh, I would probably have guessed higher than that which is also what the model does it predicts 650 so the scrambled eggs it's saying that it's probably like three eggs uh, the bagel it's saying is about 250 calories cream cheese is about 100 and then strawberry so like it's identifying everything correctly it's just wrong with the actual quantity and uh, i believe basically that this plate is quite small because you can see like how large these strawberries look and then this bagel and this is uh just low quantity so basically we're overestimating here and this is for example when i believe that um human sort of supervision is good so like on average it's going to be correct but in some cases it's going to be just like predicting the wrong food item or completely messing up the quantities and that's where the human can go in and say like no there's no way that this is this much um or you know because they cooked it they can say like no it wasn't three eggs it was actually two eggs or two small eggs or something you know and this could help as well now we're just saying analyze the meal and we're not giving any information so this is you know like the worst case for the model essentially uh and yeah like some cases as well like if you put like low calorie cream cheese uh, like low fat cream cheese or something then that's not gonna probably be what the model guesses um and so that's one thing to keep in mind and looking at sort of the worst underestimate uh, here, we're predicting that this is 175 calories, but the true was 360. Uh, and again, it's like doing all the correct estimations here of the food items, but it's saying that it's about 15 almonds. And, you know, this is also, by the way, a low resolution image. So it could be that the low resolution is messing up the performance a bit. But basically here, I would guess it's a 30 plus almonds, you know, or something like that. So it's, uh, you know, double double the actual elements that we're saying um and so yeah like those are the kind of of e the worst uh inaccuracies in our data set right now which i believe if you put the model combined with the human that's kind of the ideal like we'll be able to get much better performance um and it'll save a lot of time as well for the instead of me writing every single food item uh, i can just say hey correct the specific quantity for this specific food item all right but that's it for sort of uh, taking a look at how good it is uh, or how bad it is we can see that on average it's quite good it's messing up in some cases 
but combining that with human supervision i think is the way to go that's how you save the most amount of time uh but still get accurate uh predictions so actually i might do one trial to see if you combine if i supervise with the model to see basically take an ensemble you know of me and the model to see like how good would would it be in that case and um yeah but so in the next video, we'll try to improve uh, the model basically by uh, adding a food database so that um, if we have a food database, we can do lookup of exact macros and calories instead of the model intuitively guessing. Um, although the model does have very good intuition on calories, I would say, um, I think if we add it to a food database, uh, we can also do a lot more in terms of getting micronutrients so that's really one of the major upgrades that we'll probably get and then we can see as well um, if it's better or worse in terms of the actual predictions but all right that's it for this video i hope to see you in the next one